Hi, Seth Poston, Serious Archery Products. Welcome back to our technical series. Today, we sharpen three blades. So as we get started, there's a few pieces of equipment that you're gonna need. First, you need some sort of start sharpening stone set. Uh, we have them available at Sirius. It comes with 300, 600, 1,000, and 1,200 grit along with the base. Uh, you need a good quality diamond stone sharpening set preferably, although you can do this with wet stones as well. You're going to need a paddle strop of some type and stropping compound. A towel to be able to wipe clean your, your surface as you're sharpening, and then some sort of uh, three-in-one oil. We use Blade Guard. Blade Guard's made by Eagle Tears. We put it on all of our broadheads before they leave, so they're coated before they leave. Um, that's after sharpening, of course. The reason you need something on there is because they will rust over time if you don't take care of them. This is a quality piece of steel, high-end tool steel, but just like any great tool, if you leave it outside in the rain, it's going to rust. So, Blade Guard, something similar. Blade Guard also doesn't have any odor, so you don't want to put something that has a high odor, a three-in-one or something before you go out to hunt, or possibly something that's not even food grade, so you're, you're pushing a piece of metal through an animal, getting a pass-through, and then you're leaving a trail of some sort of chemical. So do something food grade. Big thing is you're going to want to have a cut glove. This are, these are from Amazon. Um, they'll keep you from getting stitches. Um, I'm going to use them today as we go through this video. It's uh, important that you don't um, wind up hurting yourself because you can slip with these pretty easy and run your finger right across the blade. Don't ask me how I know. So, to get into this, when we start sharpening, one of the things we're going to use are some, some uh, rubber bands. The rubber bands are going to tell us if this side's dull. Stretch it, run it down. If it doesn't snap, then that blade is dull. And I pre-dulled this on a stone before we started. Okay, so this one is, is really dull. This side is a 300 grit, this side is a 600 grit. The 600 grit is what we're going to start with today because we don't have any damage to our blade. We don't have any nicks or, or anything out of the blade, like maybe you, you had a pass through and you got a small nick from a rock or you accidentally shot the rebar leg in your target when you were practicing and you got a little nick in there. If you have that, you're going to want to start with a lower grit, but you're going to want to start with the lowest grit that's going to get the job done. This is just a dull broadhead. We're going to start with a 600. When you start, you're going to push away. You're just going to make strokes away and then you're going to turn it. When you're at the 600 or 1000 grit, I recommend that you do one stroke, turn it, one stroke, tur one stroke, turn it. If you do that, you're not going to be chasing the bevel around. If you were to push this away five times on here, you're going to start creating a big burr on one side, but then you just never catch up with it and you start hogging off a lot of material. So we're going to go through this as many times on the 600, probably about five to seven times on the 600 before we move to the thousand. So we'll get started. We just it's just simple, just a light pressure, and then turn it. Three blades are some of the, well, they are the easiest blades of all to be able to sharpen. So I'll go around this thing five to seven times. That's two. Three. Four. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this or not, but all of this darker gray matter is metal that's coming off of this blade. So we are taking metal off of the blade. You're going to want to, if you have to stay in, in, a, uh, in one particular grit for a particular time, you want to make sure that you get that out of your diamonds. Um, but at this point in time, I can already start to feel that this is getting a little bit sharper. And I don't want to stay on a low grit any longer than I have to because you're really starting to take off material. So now we're going to move to our thousand. We're going to do the same thing. It's one, 
two, three, four, that was five. We're gonna go seven on this one. Six and seven. On the blade, you're also going to start to see that there were some some shiny spots and then there were some uh, spots from uh, where I dulled it up. They're all starting to get shiny now. It's getting a uniform, nice, uh, really nice shine off of the blade on each edge. And as we get into the 1200, it's going to get even better. Again, there's material that I've got to take out of that diamond stone. I'm going to flip this over. We're going to go to our 1200. On our 1200, I'm going to do three strokes on each side, then flip it. That was two, three, four, four. That's five. Now every little tiny scratch is out of this out of this broadhead, and I, I'm going to go ahead and test to see if we're getting sharp. We're not done yet, but we'll see if we're getting sharp or not. So that one is pretty. Okay. That side might still need just a little bit more. That's good. So I'm going to do this maybe three more times. Okay, that was my aggravating, oh, that was real sharp, that was sharp. So we're just going to stay at this grit because we know we're close. I'm going to do it three more times. Okay, I will clean my blades off here just a little bit. That was good. Oh, that was real good. Okay, so now this is a sharp blade. We're going to take it next level up by moving over to our stropping compound and our paddle strop. This is one you can see we wear out a lot here at the shop. This is, a, is one that we use frequently. You don't want to put the stropping compound on just like you're seasoning a steak. You don't, it doesn't have to be a lot. One of these things lasts kind of forever. And just kind of smooth it into the grain. And you're going to do this on the suede side, not on the smooth side. Where we were pushing away on the stones, we're now going to pull back because if you push forward, you're going to tear your leather. You don't want to do that. Uh, it's going to ruin your strop. So we're going to just do the same method. Pull it back. Take my cloth, get the dropping compound off. So 
So we're, we're good there. And we're gonna finish up on our smooth side. This you can do as many times as you want on any side. I, I probably will do 10 before I flip it. Uh, again, it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a pull backward, not a push forward. Now, we'll get a close-up of this, but it is absolutely brilliant all the way around. So, at this point, this broadhead, I'll test it one more time just to make sure we're good. So, this, this broadhead is ready to hunt. The last thing that we need to do is we need to put something on it to protect it. Blade guard's super convenient just because you can throw it in your backpack. I know if you watch some of our videos, Connor went to uh, Maryland where he was hunting next to salt water for days and days, and he brings me back a handful of broadheads and they are pitted through. I mean, it... so he's got blade guard now. You can just wipe this just over your edge and you'll see that it'll go from being brilliantly shiny to just having a, a light coat of what looks like oil on it. And then you can wipe, wipe it off gently if you want or just leave it like that, it's done. It doesn't affect flight. And best thing is it doesn't smell. So this is now a sharp broadhead. When you get broadheads from us this year, you're gonna have a little piece of paper that whenever our people take it to this process and they strop it and everything's good then we require that we that they test them before they go out now this is a one for the single bevel because i didn't have any of the others printed but you'll have all of your blades are marked on here and you're going to be able to see we're going to push this through paper when you push a three blade through paper if you want to check for sharpness when you push it through, you should see very clean edges. There shouldn't be anything fuzzy, anything on there that looks like, um, man, that looks like it just didn't cut exactly right. And after you've done it a few times, you can actually feel whether or not, you know, when we had to go back and work on that one side a little bit more, our, our people know that too, because when they push it through the paper, they can see one side's fuzzy. So it's pretty easy. We just hold it and push down and then we look to see, you can actually hear it too once you've done it enough, but you look, is there anything fuzzy on there? And then when there's not, this broadhead sharp, it gets packaged and gets sent to you. So if you have any questions, comments, please push that like and subscribe button. It's important to us. We want to know that we're putting good content out for you. If there's anything else you'd like to see, any other videos, please put a comment down there below. We watch and look at every single one of them. But until next time, guys, we'll see you in the field. Thank you.